Three years ago, when I first played East Lab 2, there was a character in particular that caught my eye, a character that I would end up playing to this very day, and that character name is Tay. Now, initially, I didn't know why she, I thought she was so cool at the time, but I guess in retrospect, the biker chick who knows Kung Fu, who rides around on a motorcycle with magical chains that turns into guns and grenades, and she uses them things to have combos for days, just clicked with me, I guess, I don't know. But, while Tay has been my A1 since day one, and I enjoyed all the time I spent playing her, there have been other characters I kept my eye on. Characters I even considered to be a serious contender as a main or even a side character. Characters like mine. Characters like Siska. Characters like Cecil. Even Ghidorah at one point. Yes, at one point I considered playing Ghidorah seriously. But recently there's been characters that have caught my attention. I have a strong interest in playing them. In fact, I even taken them to the lab and learned a couple things about them. And I'm feeling pretty confident about my decision to play this character seriously. What character is that? That character is saving Tina. But why is saving Tina out of all the other characters? Why is saving Tina over regular Tina? Well, we're gonna talk about all that. We're gonna talk about what I like about saving Tina, what I don't like about saving Tina, some are strengths, some are weaknesses, and much, much more. But before we get into that, guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Disco Wonderland, and I'm your one stop shop for all your East Lab wants and needs. And if you enjoyed this video as well as the other videos on my channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps your boy out with the algorithm and all that good stuff. With that being said, let's get into the video. All right, guys, so here we are with Saving Tina. And before we get into why I think she's a lot of fun and why I want to play her, I first want to quickly explain the difference between Saving Tina and Normal Tina. Obviously, the first major difference is that one is skinny and the other one is obviously bigger than the other. But there are some gameplay differences between the two as well. So let's start this off by explaining Tina on the right. So Normal Tina, who is on the right of the screen, is a full-on zoner. Her normals, her specials, are all projectiles. Not all of them, I think her five days are the only moves that are not projectiles, but her B attacks, C attacks, D attacks, the specials, all of it, all of them are projectiles. She's a full-on, straight-up zoner, okay? Now, she has this KG meter on the bottom right of the screen, and she has to make sure this meter stays full, because if it's not, she, has, she loses access to a lot of her projectile normals and her specials. So for her to keep this gauge full, she has to use some of her specials to refill her gauge. One of them being 214A, which is like this little snack. She's, uh, I guess like a Cisco, but I don't know what that is. And she has 214B, which is like this whole on pizza that she eats. I, that's kind of crazy if she can just pull out a pizza like that, but also kind of cool at the same time. So uh, yeah, one obviously feels more than the other. Her 214A uh, fills up about a quarter of the gauge, I want to say. Actually, let me just make sure it's not talking my ass here. Yeah, so here we go. Her 2148. Oh, it feels about half the gauge halfway. And her 214B. Let me just complete the gauge real quick. Oh, pretty much fills the gauge all the way through. So that's uh, really cool. So yeah, Tina is a straight up zoner. She also has like this beam or 2236D. Uh, she also has this move right here. That covers damn near the entire screen. It's like a little setup projectile thing. So yeah, it's uh, she's a full on like, like you can't get in type of character. Like she doesn't play around. So that's Tina. That's normal Tina. That's the re regular default Tina. Okay. And by the way, these are the same characters. This this is not like a Tina from a different universe. Like these are the same character. Her whole gimmick and the story is that she puts on pounds very fast and loses weight very fast. So I think it's a really cool. So. Now that we explain normal Tina, let's explain Saber Tina. It makes her different from normal Tina. So the thing that makes Saber Tina a lot different from her counterpart is the fact that she has access to unique air mobility, that of which being her hover dash, which is akin to like an Eno hover dash from Guilty Gear, as well as having a flight mode, which she can use to get around the screen relatively quickly. So yeah, those two things that she has that sets her apart from not only Tina, but as well as the rest of the cast. But the differences don't stop there. The next unique thing about her is that she has a projectile that gives her meter, that which being her 236A. If your opponent is standing within this mist, she will gain meter throughout the duration of the mist. If they stand for the complete duration, she will gain pretty much two bars of meter for free. Now you're probably wondering why does she have something like this? Well, it's quite simple. So in this game, meter is very important. In fact, it's so important, they basically give it to you for free. As you see on the bottom right of the screen, you probably can't see on the left hand side because my camera is blocking it. But if, if you look towards the bottom right, you can see Tina's meter right there. And she's not even doing anything. She's standing still and she's gaining meter slowly, okay? This game promotes you using your meter. It's very important. Now, 
Not only you can gain meter from standing still, but you can also gain meter from running at your opponent, hitting them with moves, etc., etc. Now, the thing with Saventine is this, unlike the other characters, she has very bad grounded uh, movement. Um, her walk forward is actually a run. The problem with this run does is she holds it for too long, she will fall face first on the ground. Now, if the opponent blocks it, she can be punished. So you have to be very careful with that. Also, her back dash is really bad. So that's another um, negative in her kit. So she can't gain meter normally like other characters. So she relies on this miss that gives her a lot of meter. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, I understand that Sabatina needs a lot of meter, but what makes her having meter so different from the other characters? Well, it's funny you should say that because when Sabatina has meter, she also has access to her D normals. Now, her D normals are projectiles that she can use from range or up close if she chooses. And they're really good for zoning from afar, like she can go into flight, shoot arrows at people while she has meter. She also has her grounded D normals, so you got 5D right here. She also has 2D right here, which is a low desk plus, so that's really good. Um, so yeah, these are her two primary um, D attacks. She also has her J2D from flight, but this is mainly used for combos, not really good in neutral or for like pressure or anything like that. That's mainly a combo filler. Um, but yeah, she can use these normals to gain a lot of extra damage in combos, and she can also use these arrows to keep people out. So yeah, she has that going for her. So what are some of the other things I find really cool about Sabatina? What are some of the things that made me want to play this character? Well, first thing I want to highlight is that she can hover dash cancel pretty much all of her normals. So if I do 5A, I can dash cancel. If I do 5B, I can dash cancel. And this is on hit or block too. I can have them block, and it will still still work 5b 6b 5c 2b 5, 2a 2c i can dash cancel all of the normals to create bleak strong offense now i want to know the slower the normal the slower or cancel out of into a hover dash is so if i do 5c you see the the gap in, in between the 5c into the dash that's very interruptible that's not that's not safe at all. Someone can easily see that and punish you for it, so you need to be careful. If you really want to mix up your opponents and keep the pressure on them, you can do things like dash cancel into 2-3-A or 2-3-B and dash. You can do stuff like that. This is interruptible, but it's also very quick, so unless your opponent is really on point, um, you'll probably be okay doing stuff like this. You'll probably be okay, as long as you mix up um, mix up those kind of uh, offensive strategies with some frame traps, whatnot, like 5A into 5C. That is a natural frame trap. You could also, she also has a 6C, which is a nice pressure reset tool. If your opponent respects you, it's plus five. So this, it's a 5A is a true string. So you can do stuff like that. Um, she has a lot of interesting things about her um, as far as offense that I find really cool. Her being able to hover dash cancel, off of all her normals is really, really uh, fire to me. Um, I've always wanted to play like a Hover Dash character, like an Eno or a, like an Izzy Izzy or from Blaze Boo, but I didn't think I was built for those kind of characters. So with a game like Eastlap, it's a little more lenient on the execution side, I want to say. Uh, obviously, I can't say that for all characters. I mean, I play a very execution-based character uh, in Tay. So, but for the most part, I think this game is a lot more lenient when it comes to like execution and stuff like that. But yeah, she also has a lot of other things. She also has this J6B from her either hover dash or flight. This is really cool. You can also use this as like an approach tool. But you also use this off a uh, throw to safely um, get yourself in. So yeah. All right guys, really quick, I just wanna throw in this extra tidbit because I forgot about it while recording. Um, Saving Tina can create really strong fuzzy mix-ups because of her hover dash, right? So during her hover dash, she goes up to a certain height, but she ends up falling back down automatically, right? But during this time, she can also air dash. So with the use of her command numbers during her hover dash, she can set up a situation where she can true string into her air dash and then she can either go high or she can go low um i'm probably explaining that a little bit weird so i'm gonna just demonstrate it so you see what i mean so she has a normal in flight in her hover flight which is j6a and this move is really useful because not only has a good range on it 
a lot of good has a lot of block stun. But you can also air dash cancel because it gives you enough time to air dash after the hover flight. So one of the ways you can do a set up a nice little fuzzy mix up, you can do J two three B into J J six A. And then after that, you can air dash into two J five uh two uh J five A's or a J five A into a J B or uh, J six C, whatever you want, whatever you want to set up. And also remind remind you, she can also she doesn't have to air dash, she can also jump cancel. So that's that's another way she can set up a fuzzy mix. Um but what I wanna what I wanna show you guys is something I was messing around with recently that I think is really strong. So I'm gonna set the opponent to open themselves up after a certain amount of hits. So I'm gonna have them open up after four hits while they're blocking. And I'm gonna show you a high option. I'm gonna show you guys a low option. So I'm gonna do the high option. Boom, boom, boom. And then that leaves you pretty much open to whatever mix up you wanna uh, set up for your opponent. And then I'm gonna show you the low option. Now the low option is a little bit harder to do because ideally you want to be able to true string into the two one four eight, which is this move. Um, and we're gonna talk about that move more in a second because that this is another important move I forgot about while I was recording. Um, but essentially, you want to jail for two B into two one four A. So it's gonna look something like this. I might mess this up, but see if you press it too early, you get uh, J six a J five B. So. There we go. So, and just to remind you guys, this is all true strings. Like there's no gaps at all during that string. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you both options again. That's a true string. It's hard to set up the low option to, to true string, but you can. It's really hard. There you go. That's all true string. And what's cool about that is that Let's say they block the whole sequence. You can 5A into hover dash and start the mix up all over again. So you could do something like. And you can just basically, if they respect you, if your opponent's respecting you, you can basically just run your offense until you eventually open up. It's kind of crazy. Um, I'm, I'm pretty mad myself for even forgetting that that was a thing. Because uh, that was one of the things I was messing around with a lot while I was uh, labbing her. Um, she has a lot of ways to really keep her turn. Her 214A is really strong because this move, if all three hits connect, it's plus. It's plus five. If, if only two hits connect, if I can set it up right. I guess if I do this right. So if, if, you, if all the hits don't connect, whether it's one or two hits, you're actually negative. So you want to make sure that... All three hits of J2, uh, not J, of 214A connect so you can get your plus frames. So, the thing about Saving Tina, why I think she's a lot of fun, the thing about her that I think I dislike the most is that being able to pilot her is kind of difficult because all of her movement options are commitments. You cannot block during a hover dash, you can also not block while in flight mode. So, if I'm dashing at the opponent, if they're mashing for whatever reason or they're sticking out of normal, I will get hit. Um, so being able to finesse your way in with this character um, can be difficult. Of course, she is a zoner, so I can't keep him out. She has projectiles like a 236B and a 236C that can keep people out. But these projectiles are relatively slow. Um, so those aren't really good. Aren't the greatest, in my opinion, for keeping people out. Obviously, our demon moments and stuff like her J6B might be better for that. But but since I'm more of an offensive rushdown player anyway, I'm going to be finding myself trying to get in on the opponent. So learning how to properly maneuver this character while also having very high committal movement options, um, it's going to be a challenge for me. But outside of that, this character's fire, man. <laughs> like, yo, like... The thing I like most about her is her combos. I think her combos, outside of Tay, of course, I think she has some most fun combos in the game to land. Um, they require a little bit of uh, brain power and execution, but once you start landing them, they're really cool. So let me guys show you a combo that actually uses her 2368 bit combo that I mentioned earlier. So if you do 
like a 6B and a 6A, you have enough time to throw out a 236A and you can combo into a 5B into a 5C. So that's one way you can incorporate Mist into your combos. You can also use an Oki, as I said earlier. But enough of all that. Let me show you a combo that I learned from uh, Karako. Shout out to them, as always. I, pr I pretty much steal everything I can from them um, when they post stuff. So this is a standard saving Tina combo in the corner. I say standard, even though you could probably do something a lot easier. So it goes something like this. Maybe I could do this on the first try. And then you can throw Miss for Oki. And what I did right there was her 214C. It's a projectile that she kind of tosses. And then it flings back. Then comes back around. And it lingers over your opponent. If done in the corner, of course. This projectile, if you do it full screen. This will go the entire screen. Well, actually it won't. I lie. I just lie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lie to you. It will travel a set amount of distance. And then it will just stay there and linger there. This is basically the crux of her Oki. Um, she also has a similar thing with 236B, but uh, it's also quicker, but also doesn't linger on the screen as much. So 236, 236, 214B, I should say. Um, it's quicker, doesn't stay on the screen as long, so you will opt, usually opt for 214C to end your combos in. You wanna use this move as your as your juggling opponent in the air. Um, if you juggle them too high, you won't get the hit that knocks them down to the ground and allows the projectile to come back around and linger in front of your opponent for the true Oki. But um, that's essentially um, how our combo and how our combo structure works and and how our Oki is uh, set up. You want to basically end most of your combos in either a air throw, so you can do J6B and approach that way, or you want to um, do a combo that ends in 214C. And you can set up your Oki that way. You can also set up a 236A, which is our miss, to gain meter as they're waking up into pressure um, from your projectile meter. So when I saw that, I'm like, all right, this character is kind of fire. I, I, I'm digging her. She can also do silly stuff like this. This is probably going to get taken out, but she can do stuff like this. It stops. For some reason, it stops combo after the 10th hit. Um, obviously they're going to take this out, um, because of SMP being in the game. Her moves aren't properly, uh, adjusted to deal with SMP, which is same move proration. So she can probably get away with a lot of interesting stuff. Um, mid screen combos are pretty difficult, but generally you want to set, you're going to settle for something like a, if I can do it right, you can do like this. Actually, let me do like this. Air throw if I can get it. The air throw to the J6B, and you can set up offense that way. So, overall, this character is a lot of fun. I am having a lot of fun playing around her, trying to see what I can sort of do with her. Um, I'm not sure if I could push her to the same limits like I did with Tay. Uh, I think this character is a lot of fun. I think she's worth having as a pocket character because she has a lot of things that I find really unique and really interesting much like how i found things interesting things with tay so yes yeah, this character oddly enough to say um it's kind of right on my alley you would think a character maybe like main or cecil will be up more on my alley and i do like cecil a lot i think i have a pretty decent cecil you guys haven't seen him yet but my cecil is uh, relatively okay i think i can probably play him in a match or two but i don't think i can play him seriously against like really strong opponents but I, I can see a world where I'm playing Sabatina uh, seriously as a pocket character or even as a main. I can guess I can go over supers real quick since we got got some time. So she has this super right here. Uh, let me give myself meter real quick. Her 214D, uh, basically a combo ender. Does a lot of good damage. She also has a super out of flight, which is her J236D. Uh, nothing super, nothing flashy about it, but uh, you can probably end like an air combo with that super. Um, I don't see that super being used like that as opposed to her 214D. I think this is more practical. Uh, it's kind of cool that she has this. I think it's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Sabatina in a nutshell, man. I think she's really fun. I think she's one of the more 
Um, I think she... I, I was gonna say I think she's one of the more unique characters, but all the characters are unique. I think she's one of the more interesting characters to, characters to me. Um, she has a lot of things going for her. Um, I think she's gonna be hard to play uh, at the beginning, but I think with some time, I think I think I can make her work. I think I'll make her work. So yeah, if I make a custom color for this character, that's how you know I'm gonna be playing this character for real. Because the only other character I spent time making a custom color for was Tay. And that took me some time because I'm not really good at like, the whole color editing uh, thing that this game has, um, and just in general, like I'm really bad at like using like um, custom like uh, color editing software. I tried it with Plus R with Abba. I think I did a horrible job. Um, but uh, if I make a custom character color for this character, I'm locked in. We like this. We like this if I do that. But um, yeah, man, she's a lot of fun, and I hope to be playing this character more. Hopefully, hopefully we can finally get some content where I'm actually playing a different character. I'm not sure if you guys have been wanting that or whatever, but you know, I've been kind of wanting to do that for a while, so I'm really excited. So yeah. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I apologize if I was if I was rambling a lot during that explanation of Saint Matina. I'm still learning the character myself, so I don't know everything there is to it about the character. So, but I still wanted to show off the character, show some of the things that makes her fun and unique. Um, as far as like doing an overall like character overview or a guide. Uh, that kind of content is not in the cards right now, especially with the nature of the game, how things are constantly changing. One day you can have everything you ha you knew about the character just completely just erased the following day or the following week. And uh, it's kind of debilitating and, and kind of daunting having that looming over your head, that possibility. I will also say that you pro probably won't see that kind of content from me until the game is like either close to completion or basically already released. At least by then I know like everything set in stone and everything that won't change. Now, as far as when this game is actually finished, that could be two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, ten who knows? But a guy like me is in it for the long haul, and I hope you guys are too. And I hope you guys continue to watch my videos as we go along this journey together. But enough rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching again. I appreciate you guys as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.